Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in once again to Queen Amadai TV, More Than Meets the Third Eye. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur. Okay, so let's get into it. This is a members only live, and we're going to be talking about spiritual gifts. Now, we've talked about this before, but before we get into it, let's see who is in the chat. Hey, Mr. Hotel, Kathy B is here, Juju. All right. So, uh, that crazy beach, Aries. All right. Everybody, tune in to the spiritual zone for your members only live okay so let's get ready to talk about it a shout out to all my stardusters please like this video you can't share it because of course it's for members only and please pay attention because these questions absolutely will be on the trivia this friday okay okay so let's go ahead and get started <laughs> juju said let's get black into it okay i know that's right okay so with that all being said hey emma's blessed juju in the house okay so let's talk about it at first we're going to talk about a list of spiritual uh gifts and what some of these spiritual gifts mean and they talk about spiritual gifts in the bible in fact um if you may not have noticed they absolutely do so some of the spiritual gifts that the most high gives us are the gift of administration being an apostle discernment evangelism exhortation faith giving healing helps Okay, helping others, basically. Hospitality, knowledge, leadership, mercy, prophecy, serving, speaking in tongues. Okay, uh, teaching, sometimes also known as shepherding. And wisdom. And, you know, there are some others, but these are the ones uh, that I chose to talk about. So we'll get into the meaning of some of these. And so let's start with administration. Now, this is the ability to help steer the church, a ministry, or a group of people toward the successful completion of God-given goals with skills in planning, organization, and supervision, okay? So at the end of the day, this could be a pastor, this could be a motivational speaker, this could be a leader or someone in a management position even at your work, uh, depending on what your work is. You see, some people work in an industry where they are giving people advice about God, and I'm not talking about pastors only, but there are other people who work in the ministry as well. You know, you have mercenaries, missionaries, and the like. Okay, so some of these people have the gift of administration. They feel compelled uh, to spend their life's work doing service of, for God and for enlightening other people and helping them to build a closer relationship and a connection to the Most High. And then there's the gift of being an apostle. This is a person who is sent 
to different places to speak the gospel. Uh, you may have heard of missionaries going to different countries to help spread the word. Now, they could be also described as apostles. An apostle can also provide leadership to other churches or ministries and offer advice on spiritual matters as well. And then one of my favorites is the, gift, is the gift of discernment. If you don't have the gift of discernment, you may find yourself completely lost in this world. You may find yourself being easily fooled, manipulated, you know, being uh, blinded to the truth and suffering from Stockholm syndrome, uh, being preyed upon by people who are manipulative, sociopaths and things like that. You know, narcissists love people who have no discernment because they're easily fooled. Now, me personally, I believe that everyone is born with spiritual gifts, but the thing is everyone doesn't tap into them. Some people never develop and strengthen their spiritual gifts, and some people never even realize that they own them in the first place, but I digress. So then we have the gift of evangelism, the ability to successfully communicate the message of gospel especially to those who are not believers. Just think about someone who doesn't believe in God in the first place, the whole atheist. And then someone comes along and can give them the word and speak to them in such a manner that they start to realize that God is absolutely real. They start to realize that they were born a spiritual being to live a human existence. They start to understand that we all came from stardust. OK, they start to realize that death is nothing that you should fear because it's all absolutely an illusion and that the soul and the spirit are eternal and live on forever, thus having everlasting life. OK, please pay attention. Now, exhortation, competence in offering encouragement, comfort and support to help someone uh, to be all that God wants them to be. And that's a very valuable gift. That not only helps the person, but helps those that the person gives this gift to. Faith. People with this gift have such great confidence and power and promises of God that they can stand strong in their belief, unwavering, steadfast. And no matter what may come their way, no matter what type of adversity or whatever, that will not shake them. They can also stand up for their people. Or they can stand up for their faith. And in such a way, this is how they defend their beliefs and how they defend God uh, for those who are naysayers and non-believers, and they can move forward. And then there's the gift of giving. Now, those who have the gift of giving are particularly willing and able to share with others resources and their pleasure, their happiness, and giving them knowledge and information okay without the need to have anything in return now if you're out here giving people things and you know teaching people things and you expect something in return other than gratitude well that's a whole nother story you see some people do things with ulterior motives in mind okay that crazy beast Aries says queen has this gift thank you beloved okay honey said i can see people's true energy now that absolutely is a gift you see to be able to see people's true energy that's the gift of discernment. The gift of discernment enables you to see through the smoke and mirrors, the fog, uh, the things that people try to hide within themselves. You can see the true nature of a person. You may see it in their eyes and the way they speak, in their actions, just things that you know that they have done. Some people, you know, they don't see these things because they're blinded to it. And sometimes it's because of their own willfulness. Sometimes they don't want to see the truth. And when the truth is shown to them, they'll absolutely deny it or ignore it. And so those people have no discernment. And then there's the gift of healing, a, cap a capability used by God to restore others, uh, whether it's physically, mentally, or spiritually, emotionally, or any of those things. But some people absolutely have a gift of healing. These people are often doctors and nurses. Please pay attention, okay? And, you know, there are different types of healers. There are some holistic. Uh, there are some who are surgeons. There are some who, you know, can pray over you and things like that. Uh, help. That's a very powerful gift. Uh, someone with this gift is able to support or assist others and teach them about the body of Christ so that they may be free and then go and teach to others. That's why I love to say each one teach one. Whatever you learn that's beneficial, uh, just realize and know that it can absolutely also be beneficial to someone else. 
And speaking of that, let me shout out Hundia for coming on here for that interview the other day and telling us about how she was plagued with this uh, curse where someone supposedly put roots on her. Because here's the thing. Some people don't want to talk about those things. They think other people may think they're crazy, may not believe in it and, and think that they're not making any sense, not be able to understand or comprehend. So it takes courage to come out and speak on these things that you're a uh, personally and privately being tormented by. And the reason Hundia came out and spoke about this is because she felt like there was some, there may be someone else who needed to hear about this, who needed to hear what she had to say and possibly find a remedy in the process uh, to helping themselves with that interview. So that was very brave of Hundia to come on here because some people would never have done that. Uh, possibly out of shame and fear as well. Please pay attention. Hospitality is another gift. Now, a natural ability to make people, even strangers, feel welcome into one's home or just into your space, period. Okay? Uh, some people do not have the gift of hospitality. You know, a lot of people in the South are very hospitable. That's why they talk about Southern hospitality, because when you go up north to places like New York, you know, a lot of people are standoffish. A lot of people are just, you know, are not as friendly. And, you know, I can understand because you have a lot of things going on up there and uh, a lot of people that are nefarious, a lot of people who prey upon others, even though this happens everywhere. It, these things happen in certain places more so than others. So maybe that's why New Yorkers don't feel compelled to be so hospitable sometimes. Please pay attention. Now, knowledge. Well, this is a gift of someone who actively pursues knowledge, okay? Uh, this person is able to enjoy analyzing all sorts of data and doing research and studying. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved, Okay. It's better to know what you know because you know it rather than to know what you think you know because someone told you and you just heard it secondhand. I always verify things before speaking on them. That's why I don't trust anyone's research other than my own. And leadership. Now, this is good. You see, this aptitude marks a person who is able to stand forth before a group of people and to direct them and get their attention and motivate and encourage them to achieving their goals and desires. These people are very beneficial. You always need someone, at least one person who is willing to be active and who is willing to take a stance and who is willing to put it all on the line to go out in the front, in front of everyone, even under the threat of ridicule but able to go out and try to motivate, encourage people and lead them in the right direction. And then mercy. Now this is the defining trait of a person with great sensitivity for those who are suffering, or those who may be going through something. Uh, they may have depression. They may be in an abusive relationship, whether it's physical or verbal. They may just be someone who, you know, has done things wrong, but they're trying to change. And then now they want to be a better person. Well, some people will have no mercy on them. Some people don't care if they're trying to change. They'll still beat them down and belittle them and, you know, just make them feel unworthy of forgiveness and showing them absolutely no mercy. Now, prophecy. The ability to speak the message of God to others, the ability to foresee things before they happen and be able to warn people of things to come. This is sometimes, you know, it involves foresight or visions of what's to come. Some people have dreams. Some people just have premonitions where they see things, you know, uh, like they're in a trance-like state and they just see things. Uh, these are premonitions, visions or what have you. And that skill can also be used to offer encouragement or warnings. At the end of the day, you can encourage someone who's doubtful, fearful of things that are going to happen to them. Uh, they may just be having, you know, uh, paranoia about certain things. This is just an example. And then because a person of prophet prophecy who is prophetic can come and comfort them by telling them, you know, well, no, it's not going to happen the way you think. It's not at all what it looks like or how it seems. This is what I see for, you know, happening. And uh, this absolutely can bless someone. It can help them because fear, paranoia, you know, being uneasy, these things just hold you down and prevent you from moving forward. And sometimes it keeps us stagnant as well. 
serving. Now, this talent is for identifying tasks needed or for those who need to get jobs done. And this is also a person who enjoys helping others. They're not a selfish person. They're more selfless. Rather than doing things that are self-serving, they like to serve others. Okay? Speaking in tongues. That's a supernatural ability to speak another language uh, that one has not even learned or studied. Like Hebrew, which is what I never had learned or studied when I first began speaking it. And the reason I was speaking it is because I had a dream that I was exercising a demon out of someone and this woman needed my help and I prayed over her. And in the dream, I started speaking in tongues. And when I woke up, I could still speak in tongues. And then when I spoke to someone who was an elder and I spoke these words to them, they told me I was speaking Hebrew. I thought that was crazy. I'd never even read Hebrew, let alone spoken it. And then two years later, it was real crazy when someone that I met at a job, and I've told you all this before, came up to me telling me about her dream. And it was the exact same dream that I had. She even used the same wording when she was telling me about it. She said the rustling of the leaves on the ground on a brisk and stormy day. Most people don't use those types of words when they're describing something, unless they're writing a novel, perhaps. But she used those exact same words. And I thought it was so crazy. So I went back to the elder and I was talking to him and I told him this person came to me say, having the same dream that I had. He told me that I had likely pulled this person into my dream. And I said, but how is that possible? I had this dream two years ago. And he, he told me that there is no concept of time in the dream realm. There's no concept of time. And so that was absolutely amazing. But, you know, this person that I was speaking to, this elder, had many of these gifts. Now, another thing is teaching. Everyone can't teach. But those who truly enjoy teaching are the best teachers because they have patience, they have wisdom, and they know how to communicate what they're saying. And they know how to speak to people in a way that they understand. You see, some people only speak one way. For example, let's say you have someone who loves to talk. That crazy beast era says, I remember you sharing this powerful story, Queen. Thank you, beloved. Mr. Hotel said, clearly spiritual gifts. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. Some people, they speak with lots of vulgarity, profanities, and things like that. You know, they just have no filter when it comes to the things that fall from their lips right and so these type of people i don't think they make good teachers i just don't because if you have that type of potty mouth and you're always saying things that contain profanity and things that may be vulgar or offensive to others some people are going to be turned off and some people are not going to listen to you i know i can't listen to you if you're always cursing every other word no i can't even take you serious at this point i can't take you serious and i can't listen to you for longer than about five to ten minutes because at the end of the day, are you not intelligent enough to choose other wording? I know that people curse. Many people, probably most people curse. But usually it's when you're angry about something, right? Not just in a normal conversation. Are you using the F word, calling people MFs and Bs and all of that? So those people, when they're trying to teach, I can't take them seriously. And I don't think they make good teachers because good teachers lead by example. Please pay attention. And then we have wisdom. Now, the gift of being able to sort through facts and data to discover what needs to be done for others and even yourself. Okay, so this is a very important spiritual gift. But there are some spiritual gifts that we have that help us when it's time for us to prepare to do spiritual warfare. Now, there's four gifts in particular that I want to focus on. And the first one is distinguishing spirits. You see, the gift of distinguishing spirits is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, 10. It is the ability to distinguish between evil and good spirits. And of course, this means that there are various spirits in the spiritual realm that fight on the other side of good and evil. Okay? They fight on the side of good and evil. So there are good forces and bad ones. We often have a one-size-fits-all understanding of spiritual beings. The Holy Spirit is God and it's good. 
Angels serve God and are good spirits. And the angels are our ancestors. Please pay attention. They're not flying around with actual wings. Now, Satan and his minions are demons. They're bad. And that's usually where we draw the line. But the pages of scripture have several other spirits that challenge the imagination. And I want you to pay attention because you know I like to study the etymology of words and talk to you about different types of words and how these words, you know, we cast spells with them. When you think about the word pandemonium, which is chaos and things like that and confusion, well, demons cause chaos and confusion. And the word demon is literally within the word pandemonium. And I've told you that before, just like it's good for us to do rituals, okay? Uh, holy rituals, not satanic ones, of course, but in the word ritual or spiritual is the word ritual. And when you talk about God being good, well, God and good are very close. There's only one O missing from the word God, right? So did the word God come from the word good? And when you talk about the devil and evil, well, the word evil is in the word devil. So did the devil come from evil? These are things you should be thinking on. Absolutely. It's true. Now, just to name a few, there are territorial spirits like those found in Daniel 10. OK, princes of nations that are clearly much more than a human prince. Uh, Paul mentions rule, authority, dominion, powers and thrones in Ephesians 1 21 uh, in Colossians 1 16. Uh, they say whether there are they say whether these are individual individual spiritual beings. OK, a hierarchy or a reference to what pagans believe about the heavenlies that are a possibility. OK, and, you know, a lot of us engage in pagan rituals and pagan practices. We don't even realize it. But when you're celebrating these nefarious holidays that have nothing to do with what your ancestors were initially taught and were practicing, it was forced upon them by colonization through colonization. At the end of the day. These things are not for us. And these are things that we absolutely should not be engaging in. But some of us have gotten so ingrained in these things that we just don't seem to be able to give them up. Right. But this is not what we need to be engaging in. And, you know, the thing is, when you're engaging in spiritual warfare, you have to also think about the things that you're doing that are low vibrational, because when you're doing low vibrational things that is something that is used against you by the devil and his minions during the course of spiritual warfare because it lowers your vibrations and you have to be high vibrational uh, to counter these things that come upon you. Please pay attention. They have a lying spirit too. Some people really have this spirit. They're called pathological liars. You see, pathological liars, the problem with them is that not only do they lie, even when they know that you know they're lying, and they'll still stick to it, but pathological liars don't tend to be able to believe anyone else, even when the person's telling them the absolute truth. And that's because they know that they lie all the time and for no reason, and they can't seem to stop themselves from lying and being manipulative. So they think that other people are just like them and doing the same things that they do, when in fact, that's likely not even true. Please pay attention. So, and John... In 1 Kings 2020, uh, 22, 2020, I'm sorry, in 1 Kings 22, 22, John counsels us to test the spirit, to see if they are from God or not. In 1 John uh, 4, 1, it says, if all of these things did not appear in scripture, I'm sorry, forget that scripture. That's the wrong one. I'm misquoting now, but if all of these things did not appear in scripture, we could have a monolithic view of spiritual beings. Uh, but these passages suggest there is more to the spiritual realm than just good and bad spirits. And how do you decipher between good and bad spirits? Well, by using your gift of discernment. And like I said, I think everyone has spiritual gifts. Everyone just doesn't tune into them. Everyone just doesn't understand them, believe in them and things like that. And so when you don't use these spiritual gifts, what happens? They weaken. Okay, they weaken. In the book of Matthew, they actually talk about the Lord who gave his servants. And when I say Lord, I don't mean Jesus. I mean like the, the Lord, like the master who gave his servants um, these different talents. And sent them out into the world to use them so they could multiply and come back with even more talents. And while some of them came back with more talents, uh, some of them came back with none. One of them said that he didn't use his talents. He instead buried it in the sand. Okay. And he buried it. And so if you don't use your talents, well, are you doing yourself an injustice? 
Absolutely so. You know, it's just like when you go to the gym and you work out and you build up stronger, bigger muscles, that's what happens with your spiritual gifts. The more you use them, the stronger and more powerful they get. So you have the gift of faith, word of knowledge, move, uh, and wisdom. These are all spiritual gifts that you use when you're engaged in spiritual warfare. And even the gift of leadership that I told you about previously, that's something to use. And when you're doing spiritual battle, okay, uh, according to Romans 12, 8. So this is just some food for thoughts for you to understand that if you have spiritual gifts and you do, you should absolutely be sharpening them by using them on a daily basis, not just to benefit yourself, as I said, but they're more so for you to benefit others. And in benefiting others, you will absolutely be benefiting yourself. All right. That crazy beach era says you don't use it, you lose it. Absolutely. That is absolutely correct. Okay, so anyway, with that all being said, I'm going to conclude this broadcast. I just wanted to come on here and briefly give you all some things to think about. You know, it's very important for us to know who we are and to know what we're capable of and to look deep inside of ourselves uh, to do the best that we can do whenever we can and to encourage, motivate and inspire others on a daily. You can do that to just one person a day, couldn't you? It's not going to cost you anything except a few minutes of your time. And when you have been down, I want you to think about this. When you have been down, depressed, out, low vibrational, didn't you feel better when someone came to you giving you a kind word? When someone came to you with a shoulder for you to lean on? When someone was there to dry your tears? Why don't you try doing that, extending that courtesy to someone else? I'm sure they would appreciate you, and so will the most high. And so everyone go out there and sun gaze today, hug a tree, walk barefoot through the grass, do something positive and constructive. Tell someone you love them, wish them well, give them, you know, something positive, positive affirmations, lift people's spirits. And in doing so, you'll likely lift your own. Okay, so I learned to sharpen my strong skills from you, Queen, says Hundia. Thank you, beloved. Thank you. That crazy beast Eric says, this was excellent, Queen. Thank you. This topic can... Uh, can easily have a part two. Well, thank you. We just might have a part two, beloved. Okay, we just might. All right, so anyway, I love you all to life. I thank you all for your support and for all that you do. That's why I try to do more for you. And also remember, we're going to have trivia this Friday, so please pay attention to the broadcast. Hey, Emma's Blessed, Claudette, please make sure you're paying attention to the broadcast. And if you miss one, just go back and catch it on the replay because we're going to have fun uh, this this Friday for trivia, we're actually going to have ghetto questions. That was Mr. Hotel's suggestion, and I think someone else in the chat said it too, that y'all want some ghetto questions because at the end of the day, <laughs> at the, hey, Jonah, at the end of the day, you all want some ghetto questions because uh, some of the Jeopardy questions or the Family Feud questions may be getting out of pocket or whatever. So we're going to have some ghetto questions. We're going to take it to the hood this Friday. <laughs> Please pay attention, all right? We're going to have fun. But anyway, <laughs> Mr. Hotel said I'm hood. Mr. Hotel, sit down. You are not hood. You are suburbs, okay? Mr. Hotel, you are suburbs. Talking about you, I'm hood. <laughs> Hoodie said I'm going to study up. I know that's right, beloved. Okay, so anyway, I want to thank you all for tuning in once again. Please like this video. You can't share it. It's members only. But please be sure to like it, okay? And each one, teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember, beloveds, to keep the most high first in your lives as he keeps you.